In the world of fashion, where brands rise and fall with the seasons, one logo has stood the test of time, the iconic Lacoste Crocodile. But did you know that this billion dollar brand started as a joke? Yes, you heard it right, a joke between a French tennis player and his team, a playful idea of putting a crocodile on his shirt. How did this amusing crocodile gag come to life? And what steps did he take to transform Lacoste into a flourishing billion dollar brand? René Lacoste, born on July 2, 1904 in Paris, France, was the son of well-to-do parents Jean-Marie Magdalene Laurelet and Jean-Jules Lacoste. This privileged upbringing gave René the freedom to explore his interests, and at 15, he found his passion in tennis. Despite not having his skill as the top players, René's love for the game was so strong that he aspired to make a career out of it. His father, initially skeptical, but with one condition, René had to become a world champion within five years. Accepting this daunting challenge, René threw himself into rigorous training. His first major competition was the Wimbledon Championship Grand Slam Tournament in 1922, but he lost in the first round. Undeterred, he continued to train and improve. The following year, he entered his first competition in the United States and made it to the fourth round. By 1923, René's hard work paid off when he was selected to play for the French Davis Cup team alongside Jean Barotra, Jacques Brugnon, and Henri Cochet. This formidable team was so impressive that they earned the nickname the Four Musketeers from tennis fans. René's first major final came in 1925 at Wimbledon, but he lost to fellow musketeer Jean Barotra. This defeat only fueled his determination to train harder, keeping his promise to his father in mind. Later that year, René won the French championship title, by the next Wimbledon tournament, he had a rematch with John Barotra at the finals, and this time, he emerged victorious. However, the following year, he lost his French championship title to Henri Cochet. Instead of competing in Wimbledon that year, René focused on training and improving his skills. His efforts paid off when he won the U.S. National Championship in September 1926, defeating John Barotra in the final match. This victory earned him the ranking of the number one tennis player for 1926 by the Daily Telegraph. René's unique style of playing tennis, often moving around the back of the court like a crocodile, did not go unnoticed. In 1926, during the World Cup final of the French Davis Cup, René pulled off an upset by winning a four-set game against Bill Tilden, a player known for his undefeated winning streak. This victory earned him the nickname The Crocodile from American journalists. René embraced the nickname, seeing it as a testament to his tenacity on the tennis court. Later that year, after winning a crucial Davis Cup match, René received a crocodile-skinned suitcase from the team's captain. This victory led to the creation of a signature crocodile emblem, designed by Robert George, which was embroidered on René's blazer. René wore this crocodile-branded blazer to every game, and it wasn't until five years later that the Lacoste brand was officially launched. René, having trained from a young age, realized that the traditional long-sleeved button-up shirt was uncomfortable to play in. This led him to design the first version of the official tennis uniform we know today. In 1933, René asked André Guillier, the owner of the largest French knitwear manufacturing firm at the time, to embroider the crocodile on the front of his tennis shirt. This marked the beginning of the Lacoste brand, with René serving as the brand ambassador. René's sportswear was revolutionary at the time, replacing the traditional button-up shirt with a short-sleeve jersey-knit polo shirt. René's sportswear line continued to gain popularity, but faced a hurdle when it came to selling their products under the Lacoste brand name in the United States. In 1950, Lacoste joined forces with a U.S. corporation called Izon to create a sub-brand known as Izod Lacoste, specializing in Lacoste-branded clothing. Initially, Lacoste focused on producing sportswear in white, but their partnership with Izod allowed them to introduce shirts in a variety of colors. In 1970, Lacoste sportswear had become a sensation in the United States. However, a rival sportswear brand called Le Tigre emerged to challenge Izod Lacoste's dominance. Despite Le Tigre's attempt to establish a different animal logo, they couldn't match the overwhelming popularity of Lacoste sportswear. Other U.S. sportswear companies took notice and started creating similar shirts and logos, 
further elevating the value of the Lacoste brand. While René Lacoste served as the original brand ambassador, he believed that the brand's success stemmed from his unwavering dedication rather than his friendly animal logo. Even after retiring from tennis in 1932, René continued to innovate and design revolutionary sports goods. In the 1960s, he introduced a groundbreaking steel racket that gained recognition and was favored by top players like Jimmy Connors. Expanding beyond sportswear, Lacoste ventured into the world of sports goods in 1964, broadening their impact on the athletic industry. Bernard Lacoste, René's son, took the helm of the company in 1964 and played a key role in the Lacoste-Izod partnership. However, during the 1970s and 1980s, teenagers began referring to the shirt simply as Izod rather than Izon Lacoste. Despite this shift in perception, the partnership between both brands remained profitable until Izod Lacoste's parent company, Crystal Brands Incorporated, encountered significant debts from other business ventures. In an effort to repay these debts, the company sought to separate Izod and Lacoste. Eventually, Crystal had to sell their share of Lacoste back to the original French company, while Izod found a new home with another company in 1993. Lacoste terminated their partnership with Izod once they regained exclusive rights to distribute shirts under their own brand in the United States. In 1990, Lacoste finally resolved their brand identity crisis by partnering with Crocodile, a Chinese company. This collaboration brought stability to Lacoste, and Bernard Lacoste recognized the need for fresh management to steer the company forward. Sadly, on October 12, 1996, the legendary René Lacoste passed away at the age of 92. While the company mourned the loss of its founder, it remained optimistic about the future. In 2000, Lacoste made a bold move by appointing Christopher Lemaire as the new creative director, taking over from Gil Rosier. This decision not only revitalized Lacoste as a renowned sportswear brand, but also propelled it into the realm of luxury fashion. Under Lemaire's guidance, Lacoste expanded its product offerings beyond clothing, venturing into footwear, eyewear, leather goods, lingerie, perfume, towels, and watches. Following Bernard Lacoste's declining health in 2005, his younger brother, Michael Lacoste, took the reins of the company. With years of experience working alongside his brother, Michael was well equipped to carry the Lacoste legacy. Sadly, on March 21, 2006, the company bid farewell to another president, Bernard Lacoste. During Michael's tenure, Lacoste initially pursued licensing agreements with other companies, but eventually shifted its strategy. While Lacoste polo shirts continue to be manufactured under license in Thailand and China, Devonlay holds the exclusive global license for Lacoste clothing. This strategic move enabled Lacoste to reach new heights and expanded its market presence. In 2007, Lacoste embraced the digital age by launching an e-commerce site tailored to the U.S. market. Recognizing the power of celebrity influence, the brand began partnership with notable figures as brand ambassadors in 2010. One of the most recent ambassadors is the talented tennis player Novak Djokovic who proudly represented the legacy of René Lacoste. Djokovic's ambassadorship began with a five-year contract in 2017. Today, the iconic crocodile logo has become synonymous with the Lacoste brand, resonating with millions of passionate fans across diverse communities, both online and offline. In addition to its success in the fashion industry, Lacoste established the René Lacoste Foundation, which focuses on promoting sports participation among young children and providing them with a supportive community. From its humble beginnings sparked by a playful joke, Lacoste has evolved into a billion-dollar brand. Have you ever come across designer clothing featuring the famous crocodile symbol? What does it mean to you? Have you had a chance to experience a Lacoste product? And did you find it worth the investment? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to show your support by liking this video and exploring other captivating content on our channel.